Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Hawk coming to you. It's Friday night live show 9-27-2013. And if you uh, saw the story, it says, Boom fell. Bright light fills the sky over South Dakota. A surreal bright light, blue color illuminated the entire sky and was accompanied by a thunderous boom about 9 p.m. Monday. Campbell County, I guess. And uh, uh, they uh, talk about there were fragments and that it was breaking apart. Maybe it was a meteorite or whatever it might have been, but it illuminated big time, they said, and that uh, it was like a sonic boom and that the uh, like a huge falling star. And it was pitch black, but you could see the entire front and the road of you and the sides of the side, fields on the sides, that one person said. The fragments were orange, uh, but she saw an unforgettable electric blue sky. Well, this is quite interesting, is that uh, they may have uh, taken out, used an energy weapon in the comms the other day. There was a sort of reference in the comm designators, because I don't look at the messages or hear the message or see the message. But in the radio designators on the HF, there was, uh, in shorthand, uh, indicating perhaps a, uh, a weapon used or whatever. Perhaps an energy weapon was used to knock out a space rock coming here. Now, that would be an interesting thing to contemplate, would it not? You remember the... Remember how uh, in Russia we had the meteorite that was taken out allegedly by a missile or taken out by something else, an energy weapon perhaps. But when I asked the Lord uh, what uh, what I should read tonight as far as the scripture, <laughs> it, uh, it was quite interesting because I turned immediately, I opened the Bible, I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And I picked the Bible up, opened it, and it was chapter 24 of Isaiah. And at the top in uh, this King James uh, Version here, uh, it says at the top, it says, Judgment on the Earth. And I thought, oh boy, isn't it interesting how we have built in a secret slush fund in the Obamacare to continue to provide abortions and abort little baby children. Abort them and kill children. And I just thought to myself, isn't this interesting? Is the smoke, is the the, the anger, the, the stench of all the sin, particularly at the high places on this planet, is it now going up to the Lord? But anyway, I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to read this. Chapter 24, Isaiah. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste and turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. The land shall be utterly emptied, and utterly spoiled, for the Lord hath spoken his, this word. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant, and therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein, are desolate, therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men left. The new wine mourneth, the wine, the vine languisheth, all the merry-hearted do sigh, the mirth of the tabarets ceases, the noise of them that rejoice endeth, the, noise, the joy of the harp ceases. They shall not drink wine with the song, strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it, the city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in 
and there is a crying for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. In the city is left desolation, and the gate is smitten with destruction. And when thus it shall be in the midst of the land, among the people there shall be as the shaking of an olive tree, and as the gleaning grapes when the vintage is done. And they shall lift up their voice, and they shall sing for the majesty of the Lord. They shall cry aloud from the sea, Wherefore glorify ye the Lord in the fires, even the name of the Lord God of Israel in the isles of the sea. And from the uttermost part of the earth have we heard songs, even glory to the righteous. But I said, My leanness, my leanness, woe unto me. The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Yea, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of earth. And it shall come to pass that he that fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundation of earth do shake. The earth is utterly broken down, the earth is clean, dissolved, the earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of earth upon the earth, and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison and after many days shall they be visited. Then the moon shall be confounded, and the sun ashamed, and when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem before his ancients gloriously. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, that's what the Lord wanted me to read, so I'll definitely read it whenever he shows me that. And I thought it tied right in with that boom that was seen, I guess, uh, not only in... Uh, uh, South Dakota, but also people from uh, uh, Colorado and Montana, Utah, and uh, uh, you know, here's reports I think from Wyoming as well, and uh, you know, uh, Gillette, Eden, Tensleep, Thermopolis, Laramie, Hyattsville, Race, Ralston, Moose, Basin, Upton, and at Yellowstone Park as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's something quite interesting. Now, let's also think about the possibility of an energy weapon. You see. And that is also a possibility and very interesting. Now, let's go directly to something else right here. Now, here's a, uh, uh, we got a tip. Uh, it was sent to Steve and myself uh, earlier today. And this is an interesting tip because it matches up with a lot of things. It says, hi, uh, Steve, and attention to Hawk, a U.S. Air Force officer from Wright Pat in Patterson in Dayton, Ohio, called me. Thursday morning and told me that there was a nest hunt, nuclear emergency search team hunt, going on in Ohio and be on the lookout. And that uh, he said, I know that the police have been out like crazy in the last two days. And he says, thank the Lord and bless you and Hawk. And, you know, we've talked about Ohio. I talked about Muscatatuck and Atterbury, how the drills have been. Last year it was a nuclear weapon or device to be exploded in Cincinnati. This year it seems to be the training, seems to be Columbus. We talked about earlier in the year. You talked about earlier in the year, the marathon that was to be held on the, in Cincinnati, the, the pig or whatever it is. And then the, uh, at the same weekend it was the, um, in Kentucky, the, uh, Derby, the Kentucky Derby, the run for the roses. And how I put out information at that time that that by golly, you know, after the Boston Marathon, you'd better watch out for that because there seems to be a game afoot. And with all of the Russians, and I'm going to tell you something. Can anybody tell me how we were going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the Russians in Syria 
allegedly, and that at the same time, the Department of Homeland Security and the Pentagon are paying the bill for large numbers, thousands and thousands, of Russian Spetsnaz troops, of Russian para, uh, paratroopers, of other uh, Russian elements, okay? And why is it that they're in the United States still, and that they're being seen all over, and that they're being seen in, in uh, Colorado, in the uh, Sam's Clubs, and the Walmarts with big wads of money? They're being seen in Missoula, Montana, with, you know, rolls of $100 bills, about five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000, a big, nice roll. Why is it that they're doing that when in America, you know, a large portion of the people in the United States are no longer even making the equivalent of the minimum wage of 1968? Now, this... Thing that is going on in Ohio, which we've got to recall the Muscatatuck scenario drills and how they've practiced over the last few years to block the bridges on the Ohio River and Indiana and, you know, and into Ohio and out of Ohio. We had information from uh, Brush Hog, uh, uh, Greg Evenson has a source, you know, there. We've had all the information that's come all down the line. We got little Dickie Jones and all those people. In Butler County, little Dickie Jones, the sheriff, you know, who just loves those Russian troops. He just loves those Ruskies and to take orders from them because he no longer, he's no longer a constitutional sheriff. He's a collaborator with the enemy that has been brought in by the highest levels of the United States government, military and security agencies. And if you don't think that, then what are they doing here? Who's paying them? And why are they here in the midst of the thing when we're talking about going to war, possibly with Russia, over Syria, and you've got the best Russian saboteurs and the best Russian troops inside the United States already? You ask that of a congressman. You ask that of a senator. You ask that of a president. You ask that of an FBI agent. You ask that of a CIA. You ask that of an EIEIO. And you tell them if they don't answer up straight, then they're full of crap. And that they're an enemy of the United States and a traitor. Because the fact of the matter is, is that this government, the settled this government is now pointed at you. You know? And isn't it interesting how in Isaiah 24 there, it ties in almost exactly what V was saying. You know, he was saying last night that there are people that he knows that, you know, have two, three hundred, four hundred million dollars. And they think that they're on the winning side with the Illuminati, uh, you know, hundred billionaire, trillionaire type crowd. And he says they don't know it. But they are ripe for the picking and to be eaten up by the trillionaires. And that they think they've got a seat at the table, and they do not. Even people who have two, three hundred million bucks, the bank president, this guy, that guy, the other guy, the developer, the stockbroker, the hedge fund owner, he says they don't get it either, and they don't have a seat at the table. And you see, isn't that interesting how that Isaiah 24 ties right in? It's going to happen to all when the Lord gets uh, his judgment going upon this earth. But I'm going to tell you this. we got more to talk about with this Ohio thing. If there is a nest hunt going, and I believe there probably is, because there is a continual continual hunt by TR4s with extremely good sensors, much better than any sensor that even the top regular military can think about in space. You then have TR3Bs in a lower level of space, you then have aircraft uh, searching and drone searching b below that. You then have people on the ground that are looking and that uh, can uh, go around even at the local level, helicopters, trucks, vans, whatever, looking for if they need to follow up. So if there's an ongoing hunt for nuclear device in Ohio, that would match up with every warning I've ever given you. And I'm going to tell you what, it matches up with some other things, too. Let's take, for instance, earlier in the week, 
Uh, there was a story there in Columbus, Ohio. Just happens to be one of the Muscatatuck drill cities, doesn't it? Muscatatuck and Atterbury, for those who don't know, are in Indiana. There are training facilities where large numbers of National Guard, U.S. military, foreign troops, including Russians, Chinese, uh, people from Italy, people from Greece, everywhere, all the different EIEIOs have been training there, and these drills are about that. You also have this week, you have Kerry, the Secretary of State, Mr. Purple Heart, who got his Purple Heart by scratching, scratching his uh, arm on the, uh, on the uh, rim of the, you know, on the uh, railing of the boat, you know. Signing that United Nations Treaty, the Small Arms Treaty, that requires total res registration and basically it will require confiscation and then he can go on television and lie and say that this no way changes or impinges. These people go on TV, look you, look right into the camera and lie straight forward to you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you what, that is wrong, that is evil. But here's the deal. This police department the other night in Ohio and Columbus, the HQ, the headquarters of the, of the uh, Columbus PD, was totally evacuated after a loud explosion. And then that story, of course, just stays sort of more local and disappears. And then, you know, one minute it's this, another minute it's that. Oh, it's an explosion in the sewer. Oh, there was no explosion. It was just a loud noise. So you know that there's a cover-up and a lie going on when you start to see five, six, seven, eight, ten stories in the course of a few hours. And then I'm sure by now they would tell you, oh, nothing ever happened there. There was no explosion. And, ha, huh, we didn't even evacuate. Ha, 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 ha. Or there's no war. It's just a kinetic action. What's the definition of the word is, huh? <laughs> Y'all out there think you know, but you just don't know, Clint would tell you. You got to know your definitions. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen. I submit, from what I've heard from the backside, from the deep back pools and channels, is that there is a possibility that there was a discussion that night, very early on, that it might have been a Somali al-Shabaab operator or affiliated operator penetrating Columbus PD to send a message and to perhaps then to check and gauge the emergency responses the evacuation procedures and all of the police and fire and emergency first responder procedures if something did happen in Ohio. Now, this is coming off of the fact, you know, over the weekend we have in the Westgate Mall in Nairobi, Kenya, you have this massive attack of the terrorists, the al-Shabaab terrorists, led allegedly by the White Widow of Great Britain, who in one story, the White Widow is said to be found amongst the uh, bodies of the terrorists that have been killed. And then the very same day, in another story, it says Interpol now has a, has a uh, heads up of Bolo of be on the lookout for the White Widow. And then it goes on TV. So which story is true? And, you know, what, what is true anymore? What's not true? The level of the lie is different at each level of the Luciferian five-dimensional chessboard. You see? The level of the lie is differently. What is true on one level, you go up to the next level or down the next level, depending how you look at it. <laughs> what you thought was true is the total reverse. The only thing I can tell you that is true and always will be true is that the Lord Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And if you repent of your sins and if you ask him to come into your heart and to be your Savior, he will do that. And if you believe on him, he will promise you everlasting life in heaven with him. And that's the one thing that is true that I always know. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's go back to this. If you got Somalis doing this thing in Nairobi, Kenya, 
And then now we have, you know, and very interesting uh, information. A uh, story comes out this morning. I saw it uh, here. It's Paul Joseph Watson, InfoWars.com. Some got a warning to avoid the Westgate Mall before the bloody siege. Kenya's National Intelligence Agency, the NIS, warned some people not to visit the Westgate Shopping Mall in Nairobi before the bloody siege and all the killing and the torturing and the eye gouging and all of the terrible things that were done there by the so-called Al-Shabaab, Al-Qaeda affiliate. And the warning that was not received by the 67 victims who lost their lives during the attack. I think there's more people than that dead there. I really do. Because, you know, there's nothing that's going to come out that's going to be true of this. Because this is now leaking out. It's is buried here, it says, from a story in the London Independent Report about the incident, is the revelation that the NIS, the Kenyan National Intelligence Agency, did warn the police and officials inside the president's office before the Westgate siege, but its warnings went unheeded. And that individual officials within NIS also told their family members to avoid the Westgate Mall on Saturday because it would be the target of an attack and a pregnant policewoman was warned by her brother, an NIS officer, not to visit Westgate on that Saturday. That means there's pre-knowledge of the attack. And when you do not warn everybody and you just warn those in the presidential office there and all of that, then what have you got? You have a conspiracy. You have a pre-knowledge, and they're not doing a dadgum thing to stop it. And why is that? Whose operation was it? CIA? MI6? EIEIO? Whose operation was it? And that means that it is an operation, particularly if the NIS knows about it. Now, here's what's interesting about the whole thing is the fact that, isn't it interesting that in Kenya, a half-brother of the Joker, Tut, who allegedly is the money manager for Muslim Brotherhood Al-Qaeda affiliates, you just wonder if he's in Kenya, if any funding might have been provided by the half-brother of the Tut. I'm, you know, it's just you cannot make this up. It could not even, you could not even do a comic book that would do it justice. This is so over the top, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let me tell you what I heard from Deep Background Source earlier today. Because all this fits in. Remember, we got the possibility discussed at the time it happened. I got that information that there was the possibility that it was an Al-Shabaab Somali penetration in Columbus, Ohio. So, now we know that there was a warning before. And you have to ask, whose intelligence operation is this? And then it's just, is it just like Benghazi? And then isn't it interesting that the Al-Shababs are also affiliated with the Al-Qaeda that happens to be the Syrian rebels that are being funded by the United States government and that weapons have been provided to them? Oh, they stole them out of Libya. Yeah, somebody in special forces is ordered to say, hey, guys, the key to the gate is over here. We're going to go get a beer or we're going to split the program for a while and go get a steak. Uh, let us know when you're done grabbing all the MRAPs, grabbing the uh, the Glock pistols, grabbing the M4 rifles, grabbing all of the uh, ammunition, grabbing the night vision and thermal vision goggles and all the good stuff. And also what they don't tell you is, is they got the radios, they got the radio codes, they got the access to the satellites, and that, that satellite access that I said on air last night, U.S. military satellite, there is evidence that they're allowing certain members of Al-Qaeda in the Syrian rebels or wherever, and even possibly, I said last night, according to my sources, that they might even have had Al-Shabaab on the U.S. military satellite, one of the frequencies or one of the channels, 
and that people in your at the highest levels are asking, what is it that you're doing, America? What is it that you're doing? And if you've got this satellite, this NATO satellite, how is it that al-Qaeda is on there? How is it that possibly al-Shabaab is on there? The very weekend that they're in the Nairobi mall killing people. How is it that you don't turn that satellite off? How is it, America, that you do not trace down and triangulate on those people using your own sophisticated satellite with your own radios and your own codes, which are necessary hardware and software to use it? How is it, America, that you don't stop them? And then I will tell you this. The only thing it says that does not stop them is that there are orders somewhere from on high at the highest levels of the United States government at the highest levels of the military, at the highest levels of the intelligence community, and I would submit to you the highest levels of the bankers, the Illuminati scumbag bankers that run all of them. The New World Order, Luciferian, scumbag, Illuminati banking groups, the money groups, who take direct orders from Lucifer himself and his demons. How is it, ladies and gentlemen, and now do we then, just as we had a few years ago, with the pastor's prologue, you know, where we had the bombing of the embassy in Kenya, and then we had the coal, and all of that back then by al-Qaeda. And yet we had Operation Bojinka and all of that information, and then bingo, what happens? you got Saudi Arabian guys, probably in planes, that are remote controlled, and you got a multi-level task force doing this, that, and the other. And then the Russians knew about it. And Tatiana Karajnia wrote the, the information for Vladimir Putin back then to warn Russian business people in the United States that 9-11 was going to happen. And now documents come out today saying the same thing. But let's go back to the prior warning. Because here's what deep background sources in the pools of information say today, earlier. And this was after the attack came out, the information that NIS warned. And isn't it interesting, a couple of days ago, that the NIS, the president of, uh, <laughs> of Kenya, uh, admonishes the United States and the Israelis for not warning about this oncoming attack. Well, he knew that there was an oncoming attack, but you see, he's hanging out, doing a limited hangout to embarrass the United States intelligence community and government, to embarrass the British, to embarrass the Israeli government and Mossad, their intelligence. He's doing a limited hangout to embarrass them. And I'm going to come back in a minute after the break, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you how far back they knew about it. And when you hear this, you're going to go, hey, I'll be back in a minute. With natural and man-made disasters and economic turmoil, if we don't get well prepared, we will most certainly regret it. Good readiness must include storage of high-quality food that will build us up rather than tear us down. Much of the storable food available is full of bad fats, salt, sugar, nutrient-poor refined foods, and even MSG. In response, Enerhealth Botanicals has created our 40-day and 40-night 100% organic preparedness pail. It's GMO-free and has a 10 to 20-year shelf life if stored at 60 degrees or less. Some of the items need cooking, some can be eaten dry, while some can be soaked and sprouted. These are selling out fast at third the price of storable food packages. Call us at 866-762-9238. That's 866-762-9238. Or go to enerfood.com, E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. 866-762-9238. Or go to E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Hawk. It is Friday night and it is a real live show, 9 27, 2013. 
Now, just to let you know, the uh, Inner Health Botanical crew, Steve St. Clair and Darren Craddock, they authorized a special because in honor of V coming on the program last night and doing a bang-up job, we got all kind of reports about how people enjoyed that program. If you didn't hear it, then go back under the archives and listen. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. V brought out some things last night that were quite incredible, and he also gave you the information that he would need to, uh, the, to if you want to get with him and work with him, you can go to Rogue Money. I believe it's Rogue Money. Uh, let me see here. I've got it written down. RogueMoney.net. RogueMoney.net. And uh, so in honor of V being on, InterHealth Botanicals put out a special that will be good through next Friday. This is the 27th of September, 2013, so I don't have the calendar handy, but next Friday will be good through the close of business next Friday. 15% off on any InterHealth products, InterFood, the herbal tinctures, the Bladderac to help you with uh, to combat the radiation from Fukushima, uh, the Coca Mojo, the Sumerian, any of the items that they have, except for the Berkey water filters, which are already deeply discounted. You get 15% off. You use the code when you call them or when you uh, go to innerfood.com, E N E R F O O D.com, or when you call uh, to order. If you call to order at 866, 866- 762-9238. You tell them that you're going to use code V, code V for victory, and you'll get 15% off. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I was telling you about right before the break, and I tell you, it just, just makes me extremely angry. And I was going to tell you how far in advance, according to deep background uh, information pools and sources say that I found this out earlier today. The pre-knowledge, listen carefully now. Put your food down, put your, your coffee down, listen to this. Apparently, per U.S. intelligence, deep background sources, that the pre-knowledge of the Nairobi Mall attack goes back as far as July of this year. Are you hearing me? The pre-knowledge goes back as far as July 2013 and that some of the terrorists were known and were watched, and they were noted the date that they left to go over to there, to go on their terror, quote-unquote, adventure, and that uh, they were being watched, and they know the code name that the Al-Shahab terrorists called themselves, apparently, was called, quote-unquote, the Pioneers. The pioneers. Well, let me tell you something. If past is prologue and if Kenya and the coal back then blew, then it was then what? What was it? 9-11 in New York City? 9-11 in the Pentagon? 9-11 in Pennsylvania? You see? And there were other things that were stopped at that time. It was supposed to go on and on. It was supposed to be the Sears Tower in Chicago. It was supposed to be the Tower in Toronto, if you recall. To go back and and uh, get the information of uh, Delmert Breland, uh, you get some of Rick Wiles uh, uh, files from back in those days. You can also uh, uh, get Rick Wiles, uh, you know, when he uh, talked to you about Tatiana Karaznia, because he hired actually a Russian translator. You know, quite interesting, and. Uh, you know, Tatiana Karajnia basically said in July, it's very interesting to me that this July thing, how they knew about the Kenya bombing or the Kenya attack in the Nairobi Mall, the Westgate Mall. You see, it's a gate to the West, the West Gate, you see. You get the significance. Tatiana Karajnia said in July... 2001, she said that there is an attack that will be done on the United States, probably on the stock market, on the banking community, that will destroy the economy of the United States for all Russian business people to get all of their money out of the United States quickly, and that she thought the attack would happen uh, in September. She was right. 
Alex Jones, if you recall back then, he got a tip off and he said, call the White House and tell them not to use bin Laden to attack the World Trade Centers. That was not heated either, was it? And now we got documents coming out and saying that basically they knew all about the 9-11, but they didn't do anything about it because they didn't think they could pull it off. And then what else do we know about terror and the U.S. government and the use of Somalis? Do you not recall the underwear bomber? He was a supposedly uh, 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 a destitute uh, Somali kid who was confused and crazed and uh, in weird dress and a weird manner and everything and had no passport, had no visa. And do you recall the stories how he was put on board the plane by a well-dressed man talking to the ticket agent there in Sheepole Airport in Amsterdam, uh, Netherlands, put on the plane, and that, you recall then, it was the attorney, the lawyer from Detroit, who and his wife were sitting next to the uh, uh, the gate there, and they watched this whole scenario go down with the well-dressed man coming and saying, oh, yes, uh, well, he doesn't have a visa or a, uh, or a uh, passport. We can't put him on the plane. And then they left and went down a little hall into a side room and then comes out, and then this guy gets put onto the plane. And then the same attorney from New York is watching and he sees like what are probably intelligence agents or federal marshals are on the plane, specifically watching the underwear bomber. And then he does his little thing to try to light his underwear on fire or whatever the heck he does. And he's going, it's going into Detroit. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you see, that was a put up job. Somebody had to have high level juice to put on a Somali national on a plane without a passport, without a visa, and put him on a plane and order the gate agent in Amsterdam at Sheepold Airport, which means he had to have approval of the Dutch secret police, the Dutch uh, you know, intelligence service and military and cops to do it, and he put him on in violation of all laws, and then they watched him until he made his move probably as a mind-controlled idiot, an MK Ultra Manchurian, and then he makes his move to light his underwear on fire or whatever, and then they jump him, and then we've got a big terror deal. Who was big time in saying that they put a stop to it? The Fiddle with Boys Internally group, the FBI. So, somebody knew, according to the intelligence background sources, that as far back as July of 2013, that they knew that there were Somalis. You remember the thing? Oh, there must have been Americans involved. Oh, no, there's no proof of that. Uh, you know, so therefore there wasn't. But, yes, we're still investigating. So, no, there isn't any proof that there were Americans. But, yes, maybe there were. And then there's the White Widow, and everybody got up on the White Widow and all this stuff, you see. Ah, oh, ladies and gentlemen. So, if you know back in July there's going to be an attack and you have people in the U.S. intelligence community, law enforcement community, looking and watching terrorists probably leaving, probably from Minneapolis area where a large Somali community is from and where they know that these young Somali people are going and flying to Somalia, going to Africa, to take terrorist training to become part of Al-Shabaab. And they know all of that stuff. Did anybody stop the attack? Did anybody give a warning in July? Did anybody give a warning in August? Did anybody give a warning at the 1st of September? No. Yet they knew the date they left. They watched them go on their little terror adventure, where the choice of words used. And they were being watched, and their code name that the Al-Shabaab terrorists called themselves, apparently, was, quote-unquote, the Pioneers. And what did they attack? They attacked the West Gate, the gate to the West. So now do we have another potential attack getting ready to go down in Ohio? I don't know. 
I've tried to warn you and give you the, the information about the drills that have been drilled, about all the Russians there, and is it Russian gray terror? I don't know. Or are now we the Russians because DHS, Department of Human Sacrifice, and the pentagram at the, at the behest of the highest levels of this government, because that takes a signature at the top level to get that done. A joker tut would probably have to approve that. And you've got thousands of these Russians. you got red Chinese in here that were seen by, by people I know, seen down in Kentucky in military uniforms. And that the person who sees them gets into a little showdown with one guy. And when the Chinese guy comes down the hall and he saw the guy I knew, the guy I knew would have snapped his neck. Even though he's a disabled American veteran. He'd have snapped that Chinese guy's neck. And the Chinaman knew it. And he went around somewhere else real quick. But then after that, the guy I know gets sick with some kind of weird upper respiratory disease or sickness and has to go into the hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, there are traitors. There are traitors in this United States government. There are traitors in the intelligence community. There are traitors, Luciferian scumbag order taking traitors at the top of the military at the top of the intelligence and the top of the government in all branches. And now they got a show play on TV. You know, we're going to close it down, going to not close it down. What are we going to do? Well, let me tell you something. You'd be better off right now to go to the grocery store at the end of this broadcast and get you some groceries or put a place in order for a rush shipment. A rush shipment of 40 day, 40 night pail. Or a rush shipment of whatever type of food you need. You mean to get a rush shipment and go and get you some 22 long rifle, some 12 gauge number four buck or double odd buck, some 223, some 308, whatever it is you shoot. You need some gold and silver. If you do need gold and silver and you heard V again, he basically, I asked him, I said, you stated in May that the thing to do is to get all of your money out of the bank, to get your money out of the banks, the stock markets, the bond markets, the 401ks, the IRAs, and to put it in what did B say? And he agreed last night that that's what he said in May, to put it into long-term storage food, to put it into arable land where you can raise food, to put it into gold and silver physical gold and silver, and to put it into firearms and whatever you need to protect all of the above. And he still says that that is the way to go and to do it. And if you have not done it, you should do it now. If you want gold or silver, you call Steve Quayle, 406-586-4840. Or you can email him at steve777 at stevequayle.com. And that's Q-U-A-Y-L-E. Quail. And you say in your headline, want metals. Talk to me about metals. And then you put in there, if you uh, need to uh, get where I with him immediately, you say, here's the best time to call me. Here's what I want to do, what I'm thinking about, what I'm interested in. Here's the number to call me, the best time to reach me, and Steve will get back with you. And I'll tell you what, it's not about any more making money. It's about preserving what you got, and it's about surviving what is going to come down. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, there's this Somali connection that has ties to those people who were the well-dressed man who put a Somali national, who incidentally, his daddy was some kind of a, an official or money man or something for the Somali government. And then don't you know that the Kenyans, the Kenyan military has been fighting against the Al-Shabaab in Somalia and in that area and has been doing a good job. They've been doing it at the behest of the United States, Britain, Britain being the original traditional colonial power of Kenya. So pre-knowledge of the attack in Somalia 
tells you that the highest levels of the U.S. government, intelligence, and the military command knew about it just like they knew about Benghazi and just like what's been confirmed by old Tosh Plumley, Robert Tosh Plumley. Remember old Sergeant Major Plumley? You know, don't call me Grandpa or I'll kill you from We Were Soldiers. I think about that. I also knew a Tosh one time, and uh, I don't know if that's the gentleman's real name, but hats off to you for coming out and telling it there, Robert Tosh Plumley. Telling it in the uh, uh, with Jim Mars to Alex and the other day. So consequently, he's saying out of old Fort Bliss, hello to all the uh, uh, hello to Delta Seven and all the boys. You know, well, let me tell you this: he's 100% correct and confirmed what old Hawk told you either the day it happened or the day after. I forget which the show was on when the Ambassador Stevens was killed and the Benghazi attack took place. I told you that I had it out of the Lebanon, that he was killed and targeted for killing by the al-Qaeda that we're working with, the CIA that were involved in us giving them Stinger missiles, us giving them weapons so they could become the rebels to fight against Bashar Assad in Syria, which we now know from V that Syria was the big Illuminati bankster plan to go and to take the world into World War III and to collapse the markets and to institute a tight control worldwide on everything, the finances, the energy, all of it. It was the big Megillah. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, you start thinking about this for more than 30 seconds. If you don't get your uh, good old American... Uh, 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 fire come up into your, uh, up in your old eyeballs, then I don't know what's going to do it. Well, I'll tell you what. Somebody had to order that, just like they ordered it in Benghazi, and then what I found was, source that 11 and said that the ambassador had been talking and he was tired of, of arming and hiring these Al Qaeda people. And that he had been on a flight to Germany and had discussed it some with somebody over there in Germany. And they didn't like that. And when they came back, they attacked him. And that he was killed while being sodomized. He was strangled to death. And then you see the very guys who did it are propping him up to make it look like they. Just like V talked about last night. How these young guys that are the bankers' tools in these Al-Qaeda groups that they have too much hubris and they think they're too, they got to put everything they do up on YouTube, you know, or Twitter bird account or wherever they're doing it. And so then the ones you think were saving him really are the ones who strangled him while they sodomized him. And that has not been resolved. And those at the top of the State Department, the Hillary, Billary, Dickery docs of the State Department, the Joker Tut, and who stood down? Who told General Ham who could give an order to the head general of AFRICOM? Who could give an order to the head general of AFRICOM and tell him to stand down and not to send anybody? Who also knows about TR-3Bs or TR-4s or even gate technology that would have allowed the best mighty men and women of valor to, to jump and to get there within minutes, not hours. If you can fly a craft at 15,000 miles per hour, you can get somewhere real quick. They could have been on the ground. They could have done many things from Weapons platforms in space. They could have brought fire down. But who did not order them? Or who told them to stand down? Who could do that? Chairman of the Joint Chiefs? Little glee club with the little tight pants, uh, Dempsey? You know? Maybe Dempsey should get his, uh, you know, his, uh, his cojones cut so he can sing soprano, you know? 
like the old boys' choirs used to do, huh? Was it him, or was it whoever his boss is? You figure it out. And then ultimately, when you see this money lies on the line and this much chaos, the father of all lies is Lucifer, and these people worship Lucifer, the light bringer. But he don't bring no life. He brings the confusion. He brings the lies. He brings the death. He brings it all down on this planet. Because he needs the blood sacrifice to boost his little Lucy butt up, you see, so he can try to challenge our Lord Jesus. But let me tell you what, there's power in the blood of Jesus because the Lord Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. And the Lord Jesus, when he goes and when he comes back, he's going to have a sword in his mouth and it's not going to be pretty and he's not going to pop right down to the the big giant mega church next to the mall and the bank. He's not going to pop into there. He's going to come in, and he's going to right the wrongs, and he's going to clean it out, and he's going to send his angels to pull these tares, these iniquity workers, these evildoers who follow the devil, who are at the highest levels of this government and other governments and intelligence community people and law enforcement and right on down to certain police in their vehicles and the cars, and to the liaison officers from the East Bloc countries or from Russia, who are on your staff reporting directly to your chief cops. I know people in uh, Chicago who know that with a certainty. I know people in Indianapolis who know that with a certainty. I know people who know that in a lot of different cities with a certainty. And you know it with a certainty as well. If you just search your heart, take it to the Lord in prayer. Well, let me tell you what. I think I'll just close right here with this. Just close, you know, a portion of it right here with this. Not quite closing time. Jesse Ventura's letter to the ruling class. You control our world. You poison the air we breathe. Contaminated the water we drink. And copyrighted the food we eat. We fight in your wars, diaper your causes, and sacrifice our freedoms to protect you. You've liquidated our savings, destroyed our middle class, and used our tax dollars to bail out your unending greed. We are slaves to your corporation, zombies to your airwaves, servants to your decadence. You've stolen our elections, assassinated our leaders, abolished our basic rights as human beings. You own our property, shipped away our jobs, shredded our unions. You profited off of disaster, destabilized our currencies, raised our cost of living. You monopolized our freedom, stripped away our education, and have almost extinguished our flame. We are hit, and we are bleeding. But we ain't got time to bleed. We will bring the giants to their knees and you will witness our revolution. Sincerely, the serfs, as Jesse Ventura's letter to the ruling class. And you see, I've told you about the thing that Solzhenitsyn said before, haven't I? And how we burned in the camps later, thinking, what would things have been like if every security operative, when he went out at night to make an arrest, had been uncertain whether he would return alive and had to say goodbye to his family, or if during periods of mass arrest, as for example in Leningrad when they arrested a quarter of the entire city, people had not simply sat there in their lairs, paling with terror at every bang of the downstairs door and at every step on the staircase, but it understood they had nothing left to lose and had boldly set up in the downstairs hall an ambush of a half a dozen people with axes, hammers, pokers, or whatever else was at hand. The organs would have very quickly have suffered a shortage of officers and transports, and notwithstanding all of Stalin's thirst, the cursed machine would have ground to a halt if 
if we didn't love freedom enough. And even more, we had no awareness of the real situation. We purely and simply then deserved everything that happened afterward. Alexander I. Solzhenitsyn. And you see, Harry S. Truman also said, once a government is committed to the principle of silencing the voice of opposition, did you hear any of that today? It has only one way to go, and that is down the path of increasingly repressive measures until it becomes a source of terror to all its citizens and creates a country where everyone lives in fear. Harry S. Truman. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go into their Luciferian night without a fight. You get out there tonight and get you some food, get you some water purification, medical supplies, firearms and ammo, and you get you some gold and silver. Ladies and gentlemen, good night to them old mighty men and women of valor. I know that you can right the wrongs and take care of a lot of this. The Lord will allow you to start it out now. Good night to them old Fandango Ranch, wherever you may be. I know you're ready. And old Mickey the Boo. Mickey, you're cool. Down there. And with an endless supply.